Hello, welcome to the fourth edition of our Lenten Reflections with Venerable Dr. Tunde Yusuf. This episode promises to be life transforming and life changing. Do enjoy. Very well, of you, welcome to today's broadcast. And as we began yesterday, today we continue in this Holy Week as we mark Holy, Th- Holy Tuesday, a day that we remember the sacrifice that was paid for our sins. A week in which we remember that there was a shedding of blood, there was suffering that Jesus bore for us. And in this season, we want to renew, rewalk this journey as we look at some of the things that marked the suffering and the eventual crucifixion and the death of Jesus Christ before his resurrection. And today we shall take our reading as we mark Holy Tuesday, we shall take our reading from Matthew chapter 26. We shall read from verse 30 and we read up until verse 40. So we shall be reading 10 uh, verses from uh, Matthew chapter 26. Verse 30 reads, And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the sheep and the shepherd of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly, truly, I tell you, this very night, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And as the disciples and all the disciples said the same, then Jesus went with them to the place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciple, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, Father, if it is, it if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you could not watch with me for one hour. This is the gospel of Christ. We are grateful that in this season we have an opportunity to meditate on the work, on the prize, on the labor of salvation that our Lord and Savior 
deed for you and for me. In this flesh, the aftermath of Jesus Christ instituting the Last Supper, the verses of Scripture preceding the verse 30, where we began to read from, tell the Lord Jesus had eaten the Last Supper, signifying the institution of the Eucharist, signifying the institution of what we call in this part of the world, the Holy Communion. And Jesus had said to them, do it in remembrance of me. After he had, break, he had broken the bread and gave them uh, the, the, the bread and he blessed the wine and gave it to them. And, and the, the scripture that follow, the text that follow in verse 30 says to us, and they sang hymns to the Lord. They sang hymns of thanksgiving and hymns of praises. And after they had finished singing hymn, Jesus led them up to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, now Jesus is preparing the mind of, the, of his disciples. And he said to them, he said, you will all fall away on account of me this night. And Jesus was preparing them for the battle that is ahead. Jesus knew that the kingdom of darkness will be made uncomfortable because he was about to pay the price. The price that will deliver the whole of humanity that chooses to receive Jesus as Lord and as Savior. And in preparing their mind, Jesus made them to understand that on account of this resolution, on account of this purpose that is set before him, on account of this mission, the disciples will fall away. They will all depart from him. And Jesus reminded them the prophecy in Isaiah. And he said, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered and Jesus in telling them this I sense that the word of God was meant to make the disciples of Jesus to be prepared and to have an understanding of the time that they are in and to have an understanding of the reality of associating yourself with Jesus. That when you associate yourself with Jesus' suffering, Jesus' death, Jesus' resurrection, you are bound to face persecution. And Jesus was preparing the heart of his disciples so that they know that this relationship that will lead him to obtain the victory, the victory over sin, the victory over iniquity, the victory over condemnation, that Jesus was about to pay that price, that it will not be easy, it will cost the disciples. And beloved, you will agree with me that even today, the believer still suffers persecution on account of relating with Jesus Christ on account of standing in the world that when you choose to stand with Jesus be ready for persecution when you choose to stand on the word of Christ when you choose to stand with Jesus men will persecute you and this is what Jesus was saying to Peter but Peter was saying to the whole disciples but Peter answered him and said because of the zeal that was in Peter because of the love that Peter had for Jesus and, and beloved, beloved you must understand that our zeal that is not predicated on the word of God a zeal that is not predicated on the counsel of God will take you nowhere. And Peter said, no, I love you, Lord. He said, all 
may forsake you, but I will not forsake you. All may, may fall away, but I will not fall away. And Jesus said to him in verse 34, he said, truly I tell you, this very night, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter said to him, all might deny you, that the rest of the disciples might deny you, but for me, I love you. I will go an extra mile for you. And, and for the believer, there is a lot to learn from here. We might be zealous for Jesus. We might be zealous to do the will of God. But we need the grace that Jesus makes available for those who are his. For those who, are, who have resolved to follow the Lord, Jesus is expecting us to depend on him for grace. I, I, I'm sure that Jesus did not tell them this prophecy for nothing. But Jesus told them so that they will be prepared. And so that they will be prepared in the place of prayer. That the Lord would want them to be prepared in the place of prayer. And in verse 38, then Jesus took them to a place. You, you see what is happening here. Jesus had warned them. Jesus had told them that he is about to, call, to go the way of the cross. He is about to, to start the process of the cross, which is suffering, which is pain, which is dejection. He is about to start to pay the price. And he says to them, he says to the rest of the disciples, he said, sit here and wait. And to Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, Andrew, and um, uh, John and his brother Andrew, he, he said to them, he said, you stay here and, uh, for, uh, and, 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 and let the rest of the disciples stay here and you come with me, come with me to get cement. God, come with me to pray. Come with me to seek for grace, the grace to be able to carry on. That was what the Lord would have them do. But you sense that as he left them and he prayed, and Jesus prayed a prayer after telling them that his heart is sorrowful. He prayed a prayer. He said, if it is possible for this cup to pass me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And Jesus, knowing that he was about to face the cross, it was not the fear of the cross that make Jesus Jesus was simply asking, is there another way, Lord, to do this? Is there another way? And Jesus' prayer is to let the believer know that the Lord's way is the best way. The Lord's way, God's way, is the only way. And Jesus was praying, and I sense that he was not only praying that, the, that he will not go to the cross. You see, the cross and the pain that is associated with the cross has to do with our sins. It was the cup of our sins that he bore, that Jesus saw. He saw the filthiness. He saw the filthiness in this cup. And this cup he was required to drink. He saw oppression. He saw blood, bloodletting. He saw injustice. He saw ungodliness. He saw witchcraft. He saw wizardry. He saw all these things in the cup. In the, in, in the cup. And this cup was passed to him to take. And Jesus said, I am sorrowful. And I sense that Jesus was not only praying for himself, but also praying for the disciples that they will be able to have grace, the grace, the grace to go on, the grace to remain his disciples. And he prayed with them. He prayed for them. And he said, said, not my will, but your will. Lord, let your will be done. And, and I believe that that's the prayer of a true disciple of Jesus. Let the will of God be done in our lives. Let the will of God be brought to pass in my life. And he came, verse 49 says to us, 
he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Should uh, so could you not have watched with me one hour? Beloved, Jesus was talking and rebuking Peter for not praying. That for the believer, a life of prayer is a is a must, is a is a characteristic of the disciple of Jesus Christ. That you can't be a disciple without having a consistent prayer life. A prayer life that looks to God for grace, that looks to God for mercy, that looks to God for the ability to accept His will. So beloved, as we bring to an end today's broadcast, in the face of the cross, Jesus was prepared and he prepared the mind of the disciples to be ready for persecution. That anyone that is his disciple should be ready to face dejection, should be ready to face opposition, should be ready to face accusation. In fact, once you go the way of Jesus, you will be hated by men. On account of Jesus, men will hate you. And so it should not be something new that men dislike us in our offices because we stand for the truth. In our schools before because we stand for righteousness. In our public space, in our private life, when we stand for, with Jesus, men will oppose us. Then secondly, as we know and because we know that men will oppose us, men will resent us, we must understand that the place of strength is the place of prayer. The place to receive grace to be able to stand. The grace to be able to walk the spiritual journey. The grace to be able to stand against evil and wickedness. The grace is obtained at the place of prayer. In prayer. That birthed in prayer. Seeking divine help. That enables us to say like Jesus said. Lord, your way I will go. Let your will be done in my life. Is that your prayer today? That you say, that you can boldly say as a disciple of Jesus, Lord, let your will be done. May it be so for us, even as we mark this Holy Week. God bless you. We'll continue our meditation tomorrow. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Lenten Reflections. Join us tomorrow for another episode. God bless you.